Hello, everyone out there. Um, I'm Roxanne, as you know. And I'm Kathy. Hi. And, and I'm David. Well, David is with <laughs> us, David Webster, who is teen, teen Elliot. I love mm -hmm. that. You even kind of put that on your name there. I did, and yeah. I don't want to get confused. I'm so excited that you're here. <laughs> you know what? Speaking about getting confused, you two really do look a lot alike. We do. It's insane, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So you, you kind of look at that and you see your future. Now, just a quick question. How mm -hmm. about in your family? Do you know who it is that you, you look like? Or are you a combination or you don't? I don't really look like anybody in my family. No. Um, I guess probably more leaning on my dad's side. But okay. I, see, I see features of myself from uh, some, some of the, the men on my mom's side of the family. Um, okay. But yeah, so, I'm, I'm kind of kind of a kind of an outlier. Oh, so yeah. wait, maybe maybe not. Maybe somehow you're you're related to Evan. We don't know. I would not be surprised at <laughs> all. Not one bit. Which is what I think is so cool. But anyway, so um, I always research my guest, as does Kathy does the same. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to tell you that you're a very interesting guy to research. And okay. I noticed, of course, you like to act. What was it? Around 12, you started acting. Is that around what it, 12? Yeah. 2014. Okay. But but you also have all these other things that you're doing and behind the scenes stuff. So I, I wanted you to just share with our audience because they're falling in love with you and your character. So they're going to go and research this once you're done chatting. They're going to go look up all this stuff. So share some goodies with us. All right. Well, uh, while I was in high school, I actually started writing uh, the first season of a series. I started and finished it, uh, a series set during the First World War from a German perspective. Wow. And, uh, 13 episodes of that. Yeah, that was basically my entire high school. Um, and I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm so, I, I might revisit it and, and uh, make some changes to and whatnot. And I'm still writing to this day. Lots of ideas up here. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where my heart really lies is in, uh, is in writing. I'm in film school right now. I go to uh, Sheridan College, which is in, in Canada, in Ontario, um, in their Bachelor of Film and Television wow. uh, program. And I, uh, I've been working on many friends, short films, you know, doing uh, sound, lighting, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, that it's a directing? blast. Yeah, I've, I've, directed, uh, I've directed a few things as well. Um, I actually, I, uh, I, I produced an, a, uh, a live television show which we did for a live TV class, which was a, a pro wrestling WWE spoof thing. It was quite fun. I think I saw that somewhere. There was yeah. something posted, I don't know if it was social media or what, but I, I saw pieces of it. That was cool. Yeah, so that was- your heart, David? Are you to continue the acting or are you more interested in behind the scenes, directing or producing or both, a little of everything? Yeah, I like to do everything because I love acting. It's one of my favorite things to do. I love to write. I love to direct. I just love making- media as a whole in, in any capacity um things that will help make people feel stuff basically now i saw something interesting besides you having the credit on um the way home you have a credit for of course being teen elliot but mm -hmm. there was one for soundtrack what's a soundtrack credit well uh, the soundtrack credit is because they have um me singing uh oh, what's it called now um the the sister hazel song in episode eight, I think it was. Um, oh, goodness, I'm forgetting the name of it now. I can sing it, though. We it's know hard it. hard to say it. what it is I see yes, in yes. you. Wonder if I'll always be with you. And I can't say, and I can't do enough to prove it's all for you. <laughs> Man, that song, because 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 um, Alex Hook and I, we had to memorize that for that scene. For the rest of the show, it would just pop into one of our heads, and we would both sigh and start singing. Oh my gosh! So <laughs> yes. that is that is why you have okay, you have the soundtrack. Okay, I yeah. love that. And I was curious because I I wasn't sure if um you were singing in the background somewhere, and I didn't recognize it or what it was. But that makes sense. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, so how about your audition process? Like, were they looking for someone that looked like Teen Elliot? Did they, I mean, look like Elliot? Did they make you look like him? What happened there? So, um, actually, the the first time this show ever uh, ever crossed my uh, crossed my path, it was actually an audition for a different character. Oh, um, yeah. So I uh, I auditioned for that, and I read the script and the premise, and I went, "Wow, this looks really good. I hope I book this." Um, and then maybe. A month, half a month later, 
Teen Elliot came across my uh, across my email, and uh, I was like, oh, th- th- this is also a great role. Uh, and I, I did my audition for that. Thought it looked great. Sent it off. Forgot about it. That's basically what when you're auditioning for stuff. That's what you have to do. Yeah. You do it. You forget about it. And um, and then uh, I I got uh, I didn't even have to do a callback. They just they gave me the role, and I thought, wow. Because normally for a big role like this, what they'll do is they'll do a, a, a callback and they'll, mm-hmm. um, they'll have you do a different scene. Maybe they'll even have you uh, get in a Zoom call with the director or with the writers or something like that. Um, but no, they just uh, they, they gave me the role right off that audition. And I thought, okay, I guess I, I probably look like um, whoever, uh, whoever adult Elliot is. Yeah. And then what I learned actually from the writers was that uh, they actually cast me first. No kidding. They cast me first, and then, so they 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 looks matched uh, Evan to me. Huh. You know what? That's such a compliment to you. That yeah. they really wanted you. They thought you were perfect for the part. And then I love that. That's a cool little tidbit to know. Yeah. Well, Kudos to you. Do yeah, you? So, and, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no no no. You go. You go. Uh, do you and Evan ever compare notes on the character you share? So, so what we did uh, before we started filming is we got into a um, got a new Zoom call together, and we uh, we basically talked about Ellie's mannerisms and stuff. We were basically right off the jump on the same page about who he was and and his relationships with everybody. Um, uh, the the big difference was that Evan knew everything that was going to happen in the season before we did. Oh. That's something. That's something interesting that that I can cover in a minute. But. Um, Basically, we went over little mannerisms. So how does he react when something uncomfortable comes about? How does he react when he's thinking? How does he do this and that and the other thing? And we uh, we talked that over. We wrote them all down. And throughout the uh, the show, we were looking at that. Um, and then partway through, I got the video of uh, Evan and Kyler singing the Sister Hazel song. Um, so I was able to just see him acting a little bit more. I was yeah, able to, yeah. to tailor a little bit more uh, of what I was doing to to match him. Um, so yeah, that's basically what we were, what we were doing. That I mean, it's it's wonderful. I mean, it's so believable. At, we as as you know, viewers are like loving it because it's so believable. Do you know what I mean? It's not like we could tell that they've changed things and tried to make it work. It just really just works. Mm-hmm. You're both like. All of after the whole cast is exceptional. Incredible, oh, incredible yeah. people to work with as well. Oh, that's yeah. nice to hear. So, um, what about your backstory? Like, do you have a backstory? Did they give it to you? Like, I was let me let me say that and only answer what you can because it might be things that you want to tell us later. Mm-hmm. We don't really know much about Elliot. We see you as a young guy, but we don't ever see your parents. I know mm-hmm. they're mentioned. Mm-hmm. You spend more time mm-hmm. over. Yeah, you, at the Landry's mm-hmm. in the barn. <laughs> Do you have a brother, sister? I mean, will we find out more about that? And- so um, all I know is that uh, that might get covered in season two. Gotcha. That might. Okay. Um, all right, Mike. But Evan and I, we uh, we both had the same idea of what his backstory was and why he spends a lot of time in the Landry barn. I can't. I don't know if I can really say what that is at this point. Evan may have said it in another interview, but I'm going to be. I'm going to be safe. I'm going to say. No, uh, we're okay with that. I have to wait around for season two. Okay. No. Yeah. That, that's that's good. That's good. You okay. should. You should make us want to. Watch yeah. Of course. Season. Of course. I can't wait to see to see because even like what I know is fairly bare bones as well. So. Cool, yeah. Kathy. What were you going to say? Were you going to say something? I was just going to say the uh, one of the reasons he probably hangs around the barn is he has more chance to encounter cat that way. That's one true thing. big part. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if you and Evan rehearsed it, but you have almost identical expressions when you're feeling heartbroken, when, you know, cat ignores you and or ignores uh, Elliot and is focused on Brady. So I thought that was really you can really yeah. see. Yeah. See, like we did go over some mannerisms and stuff, but we also just have a very similar way of presenting ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like casting blew it out of the park with this. Oh, they did. They're yeah. they're amazing. They're like so amazing. I'm like, I'm going to have them on and pick their brain and want to know what their thoughts were and how they, you know, figured out what they were doing. I don't know. Or was it a lot of it? I don't know if I even believe in like luck, but was it also a lot of luck too? Who knows? It, it was may have been. It, it, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, yeah, it's meant to be. Mm-hmm. It's meant to be. 
I'm not asking for a spoiler. I'm just going to say, I hope a writer somewhere mm -hmm. is working on Elliot's notebook. And, and maybe it'll be featured in season two as someone gets hold of it and figures out, you know, the past and the future and all that stuff because they have just been eluded. I think Elliot is the keeper of all things secretive mm -hmm. in Fort Haven. And, and um, I'll be glad when they start revealing some of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Now, <laughs> the barn. Let's step back a little bit to the barn like we just okay. mentioned it. Is so I we know that there's a there's a, a real place and we actually it's um a viewer who lives by she went and showed us pictures of the area but we also know that there's a set that you do like indoor stuff with mm -hmm. but that barn was a real barn or is a real barn correct yeah um how about like when we see that you inside you got your little man cave going on you got your computer set up was that in the real barn was that done in a set how it nope. had that was the real barn that was uh we, we, so if it was cold that day the cold was coming through the windows if it was hot that day the sun was coming through the windows it was uh it was totally real i could look outside and see the uh the uh the landry farm sometimes and just hang up hang out up there when i wasn't filming Okay, yeah. that's pretty cool. So you did have like your own little space. I don't oh know. I love it. It's like, it's real. So it's mm -hmm. real in our minds. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 100% no, real. And uh, I had a lot of time to uh, acclimate to that space on the first day. Because uh, the first scene that I shot with um, Alex and Sadie both, um, I was up in the barn. And I like waved down and I introduced myself to, to Alice. And so there are no cameras up there. There's nobody. It was just me by myself. Oh, wow. And so while they were doing turnarounds and setups and everything like that, I was just hanging out up there by myself. It was my little space. So I, I, I sort of, uh, it really was, it really was. Yeah. Uh, nap. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, one of the questions I had, of, of, you know, when we knew you were coming on and then it was almost, it, brought it home last night's episode there's a scene where adult elliot is sitting in monica's cafe mm -hmm. and he looks over him and he sees the four of you it's it's uh team cat and elliot and nick and monica yeah. so my question my original question was do the do the teen scenes and the adult scenes film like on separate days do you guys do the actors ever mingle or is it kind of all together how does that work so Occasionally, there was some crossover. Um, but in in that case, there definitely was because, uh, and also with uh, the scene where Kat's telling me that she's going to leave with Brady, and mm -hmm. uh, Evan's looking over and he he sees that as a flashback. We were um, that was my last scene actually. The whole show it was the last thing we filmed. Um, but uh, he yeah he was on set that day and uh, we got to see him then. Basically, that last day was the day that we got to see everybody together. Um, Outside of that, I saw Evan very occasionally, most notably the uh, the first day. I believe it was the first day we used the pond. Mm. Yeah, the actual pond location. He was there. And you jumped in. You, David. I jumped in, yes. Jumped in that pond. I asked, um, when we had Kat on, well, Kat, my goodness, we had Alex on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. We had Alex on, I think it was our, in the very beginning. And she told us a lot about the pond, how much of it is like it's a real pond jumping. Of course, she didn't jump in it as Kat at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she does in the last episode. We don't know this. But you did as you mm -hmm. <laughs> to check out what it was like. So what was it like for real to jump it in was, It was. Keep in mind, I jumped in in August. Mm -hmm. It was lovely. Oh, it was. It was lovely. It was warm. The water was, I, I, I mean, it wasn't clear, but it was clean, yeah. apparently. Yeah. I also, I grew up in a, uh, a small town in northern Ontario, in Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to go frog hunting with my, uh, frog hunting. We, my dad would collect frogs and raise them. Mm -hmm. um, oh, really? Yeah. And okay. uh, so we had like a little pond in our backyard, but we'd go out to swamps and stuff. Try to do it. So I spent many a time in submerged in swampy water. My dad would throw me in sometimes. <laughs> um big deal yeah so i was i as actually um i got a phone call and they were asking her like hey david uh we'd like to know if you're comfortable with jumping in the pond i said i'm from sudbury man <laughs> i'll jump in any body of water you show me mm, so I <laughs> it was it was lovely you know i i and 
I was actually, I wanted to go in more. And I even, I went to, after we did, I think I was the first one, I think I was the first one to jump in the pond because it was the first day we used the pond and, and mm -hmm. my scene was the first one we shot. So I think I was the first one in there. Cool. But I'm not sure. I, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, and I love, you took off your glasses and you threw them, right? Yeah. You threw them on and then you jumped in. <laughs> because I actually, I actually said to them when I was going to jump and I said, I think my glasses are going to fall off if I jump in there. And they're like, oh yeah. Okay, uh, just throw them on the shore then, because we don't want to lose those. We don't. We don't have. We, we only have so many of those. We don't want to lose careful. them. Yeah. So is, it, is that just glass, David? The glass. Yeah, it's just glass. I, I'm. I have. Uh, I think 19 out of 20 vision. I'm a little far sighted, but I do not need glasses. Soon declining because uh, screens and whatnot will. And yes. I'm getting older. Tell me about it. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. From being a teacher and I was like virtual for months and months. I'm like, what happened to my eyesight? Like I went yeah. a little cuckoo with it. It was terrible. Totally. And plus everyone in my family, everybody, including my sister, wears glasses. So yeah. it's going to it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It is what it is. Now, you said you were watching. Do you watch with your family? No, because my, my family lives up in Sudbury still. So um, okay. I'm down here and they're they're a week behind still. Um Did do they call and ask for spoilers? They do. Well, I, I mean, they all saw the, uh, the 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 scripts and whatnot. I was telling you okay. about it, but all yeah. right. So, so they know. Yeah, they know. They know. <laughs> they know. They know. Um, you know what I wanted to ask? A lot of people are asking this question when we were talking about the set. Um, and then this past episode, um, nine, we here in the states. We were able to see what, you know, um, grown Elliot's house is like. I don't know if it's changed much since teen Elliot lived there. But there's a lot of blue, a lot of blue in Dell's house. Mm -hmm. Is that because there's a lot of blue there or does it have some kind of meaning? You don't have to tell us. You what can't meaning. tell us what the meaning is. You don't have to tell okay. us what the meaning is. Is there a um, meaning to the blue or no? Well, uh, I'm going to say, say I'm going to say there there very likely is because the outside the, the, it's 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 a film set. Yes. If they want it to be a color, they will make it that color. You're right. Yeah. So if the outside of the house is all blue, and the inside of the house is all blue, it's probably a reason for it. Also, the kind of the logo for the show is blue. Yes. Okay. Seems like it's, it's just kind of a blue show. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're right. Okay. And mm. there is a little bit of blue <laughs> bluing, you know. Like oh yeah. Blues. We oh, have yeah. a lot of that going on. Yeah. What What are you enjoying the most <laughs> about being part of this show? I love seeing uh, everybody's theories and whatnot because um, the way that they actually released the scripts to us is they would do um, a block at a time. So about two mm -hmm. episodes of, at a time. Right, right. And so we actually didn't know what was going to happen. We were learning right, right alongside uh, everybody else. Actually, during our, um, our table reads and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't, I'd only look at my parts and then nothing else. So I'd experience it like I was watching the episode through the table read. Cool. Every time, and so uh, um, I forgot what your question was. I'm sorry. Um, I was asking what was my question. <laughs> I'm enjoying what you were saying. <laughs> oh, I may have asked you. Did I ask you what you were enjoying the most? Oh yes, right, right. Yeah. Um, seeing everybody's series because I was making my own theories about what was going to happen, what, how, what, how did everything work and whatnot, and so. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm getting to see everybody else do what I was doing, um, okay. and I get to see. Uh, Who's right? Did you who's, do any, who's got the best guesses? Did you do any immersion or research uh, to learn more about 1990s culture? Um, a, a little bit. Um, already, like, I, it's not hugely different to today. It wasn't that long ago. No, you're correct. Um, the biggest, the biggest thing that I noticed. I think I, I, I said this in um, another interview, but. Uh, <laughs> My uh, my pant legs kept getting dirty because they were so long. I kept stepping on them, and then and I was like, "Is this supposed to happen, or, or are my are my my are these pants too big?" And they're like, "No, we just ruined the back of our backs of our pants. That's just what we did." It's like, yeah, oh. they, they were long. There were some dramatic differences toward the, in earlier episodes. You know, like Wi-Fi. What is Wi-Fi? And mm. I don't remember if they oh. go on Facebook and it's like, "What are you talking about?" But when when Teen Elliot first encountered present day Alice and she mm -hmm. was talking about stuff and he was like, I have no idea what, what you mean. Yeah. 
Um, so stuff like that, actually, that's, um, you reminded me, things like the dial-up internet and all that stuff. I already knew all, about all of that stuff. Um, uh, so I guess in that sense, I did research it because I was looking about um, how all the old computers worked and whatnot. By the way, that computer in the barn, that was real and working. Wow. I was, I was, try I was trying to find uh, the old games on there, but it ended up making too much noise when it was on. So they, they had to keep it off while they were filming. <laughs> that's funny. That, yeah. Well, that's that's what you get. You're bored sitting up there waiting and having it. Well, you're not that you're bored, but you were in between waiting, having a good old time and experimenting. There's an actual game. It's about going west. It's about the Oregon Trail that you can still get when you Google it. It was from then, and you could see it's like a little bit pixely. It's fun. It's called the Oregon Trail. It's an actual game, and you could get it for free. And my kids play at, sometimes at oh. school. And then you could see how it it looked when things like that first came out, which is right. Kind of I, I got to check that out now. Yes, thank yes. you. And if I, I'm pretty sure that's what's called the Oregon Trail. And um, you have to survive going on the trail, and how much money you get, and all the different things that happen along the way. But it's cool because it still somehow works when you Google it, which is a cool thing. I don't know how they saved it or did it, but that's probably, tech. probably so, like a browser game or something. Okay. All yeah, right. That makes guess. sense. That yeah. makes sense. So you got a season two, right? Yes, yes we do. <laughs> All right. What can you tell us about season two? Like, can you tell us when it's going to start filming? Do you know what your schedule's like? So uh, right now they're saying probably mid late July. Okay. So yes, sometime sense. sometime midsummer. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. The last time that they filmed, how long did it take? How many months? So we started filming, I think, in early August. It mm -hmm. might have been very late July. Yes, but I remember I'm, this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure it was late August though. At least that's when I started. Yes. But yes. they weren't filming for too too long before I showed up. Um, okay. And we finished our wrap was December eleventh. 11th maybe yeah okay. um and so we're starting a little bit earlier this time because uh it, it got a little miserable with the cold towards yeah. the end especially yeah. with those uh those poor ladies jumping in the pond yes yes yeah. um so they're gonna basically try to beat the weather a little bit all right so we we expect you to start filming in july sometime mm -hmm. and you'll probably finish up in november then and I do yeah. know the winds can get really like bad in that area, like oh, crazy yeah. wind, scary. So, so where uh, where I'm where I uh, grew up in Sudbury, which is very far north, the, the actual temperature gets a lot colder. So I thought, oh well, you know, I'm, I'm used to walking to school in in minus thirty five Celsius. I'm not entirely sure what that is in Fahrenheit. Might actually, I think it's the same. I think it kind of meets somewhere in the thirties. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, or, or walking home from school rather, um. And so I thought I'd come down here into southern Ontario and it would be fine. I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. The winds, they are insane because yes. we, we, the Great Lakes are, uh, are, yes. are right next to us. And so the mm -hmm. wind comes off of those and there's so many uh, flat farming areas and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It was cold sometimes. But what I always, what I always say is uh, basically you say the cold, it's not even real. It's not even real. It's just a feeling. It's not even real. And even if it was real. It would be awesome. It would be awesome because I love being cold and, and shivering. It's the greatest thing. Oh, and then if, if you just keep that mindset, you'll be you'll, you'll be good to go. We nothing, have nothing to beat you. Thirty five degrees below zero because I come from Chicago. She's mm. from Chicago. We have that weather. We're out drilling. So yeah, you understand. You get it. Yeah. And in Jersey, I live in South Jersey. Um, when it is like 11 degrees, I cry because it's cold. <laughs> I do like the cold, but I'm like, it's 11 degrees. Why are we in school? But we are. We're in school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then I laugh when I hear about where everywhere else is. But for us, that is that is very cold. So um, when you are there, are you allowed to take a few behind the scenes fun photos and share them on your social media? Um, I don't know if you can share them on your social media while you're filming. I, I okay. worked on a different production where uh, some other kids I was working with did that and they got a big slap on the wrist for doing that. So I just oh, I nice. just avoid doing that uh, gotcha. altogether. But took, we all took lots of photos. And I'm sure once episode 10 comes out, out I know that I'm going to be posting a all right, ton cool. 
once episode 10 is, is out and the, and the season's finished. But mostly what I took pictures of was because we were in such beautiful locations all the time on the beach. Even just uh, part of one of the things I'm most excited for with season two is just being back on the Landry Farm because it's beautiful there. Especially in the summer, what I would do is, is um, you know, sometimes uh, uh, on my very first day, I filmed, I was like the first scene and the last scene, I think. And the rest of the, the day I had, I had, wasn't filming at all. So I just walked around and lay down in an actual field and just sprawled out, listened to some music and took a nap. Nice. Um, it was, it was amazing. One of the, one of the, the highlights of, of my year um, was just hanging out on that farm. So I took lots of pictures of the, of the scenery and some of the locations around there. I think Roxanne's trying to say we're going to take some questions now from our viewers because yeah. there are I, was, I was coughing and I, I muted it myself. You know what I want before we even do that? Can you okay. can you share with us anything? And it doesn't have to be on Hallmark, but any mm -hmm. new projects that you have coming out, something that you would want us to know about. And we will definitely, you know, find them and check them out. Okay, um, so I don't have anything filming lined up right now other okay. than season two. Uh, obviously, still auditioning, still working, still on that grind. Um, but there's a movie coming out, hopefully, um, that uh, I was a part of, and I love the script for it. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a big sucker for good scripts, which is which is why this show is so special to me. I was okay. always I was always very invested. Um, but yeah, uh, it was called Desire of the Prey, and uh, I think it's from a German production company. Um, yeah, I'm 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 it, it, I'm super excited for that because I love the script. I put it in the chat. Desire of the prey. Now, um, what is the show that you were just on? It it flew out of my head unless Kathy, you remember. You what what were you just on? Um, um the, the the thing that came out most recently before the way home was uh, Luckiest Girl Live with. That's uh, it. Yeah. yeah, that one was dark. That was a doozy. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was that was a doozy. Yeah. Make sure that um, they check all of that out. Now, mm -hmm. um, now, go ahead, Kathy. What were you going to say? We're going to take some there's, questions. There's another one. I can't think of the name of it now. Um, I think your character was Ben, but it was about a uh, school shooting or something. Yeah, that was Lucky's Girl Live. That was was the okay, yeah. Yeah, that was Lucky's Girl Live. Spoiler that alert. Impression. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert. She's not the luckiest girl alive. No. No, she's not. No. Yeah. You know what was a really cool scene and it was so touching is so we're going back and forth with, um, you know, present cat and Elliot to the past. And she realizes that when the news came and she was devastated and she's standing there and Brady is behind her and you're behind her, she's reaching for your character and you're holding hands. And of course, Brady sees it and then wants to take her hand. Mm -hmm. And I love when it clicks in her head that, it was always you, like there, like we're like yes. It yeah, was where have you been? My yeah. theory is she only uh, ended up with Brady because Brady was ready to take her away from town, and at that time in her life, she want she needed to get away from her family. You know, once her her dad was spoiler alert eliminated from the picture, mm -hmm. she she just wanted to be gone because Dell was giving her the cold shoulder. Um, but yeah, it was. I found it very rewarding to know they were in game all along. So since we've met Alex, she told us from the get-go that her jaw dropped when she realized how the series ended. Or she how the series, the season. Season, I'm sorry. Series, mm -hmm. Season ended. Woo, sorry. So did yours? Um, well, I, I, I saw some stuff like my predictions ended up being uh, being pretty close to accurate for, for a big part of it. So I was super excited. I knew something. Yes. <laughs> something's what? very specific uh, okay. ends up ends up being very important, which. OK. Some All people, right. We only have I shouldn't say any more. I shouldn't say any more. Nope, I'm going to do that. Uh, We're OK. okay. With that. That's right. exciting. Next week. We'll one more week, guys. That's okay. Week. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. So we have some, like, people are showing love and have some questions. So Greg A. says, wow, from a history buff, mostly World War II. So Greg is a history buff. Mm -hmm. He loves hearing that, and he hopes that something happens or gets picked up with your um, your World series. War series. Thank you, Greg. Me too. I hope so as well. Now, I will try not to disappoint. You said it was from a German point of view, a German soldier or a German citizen. What what was it? Uh, Ger German soldier. Yeah. 
um, yeah. right from right from the jump of 1914. Um, hopefully, it, and the season ends at the end of 1914. So there's a book. It, there's two parts to it. There's mm-hmm. a little bit more romance in it, but it's interesting. It's called The Summer of My German Soldier. Mm-hmm. Look it up. The Summer okay. of My German Soldier. And there's a second part. But here's why I wanted you to look it up. Um, it's interesting because, you know, most World War uh, stories, they're not it's not about them and they're bad or whatever. And here you get the feelings of the, of the soldier Mm -hmm. and a young girl is trying to help save him, which normally it would be, you know what I mean? The opposite, turn it around kind of thing. It's kind of cool. It's a different perspective, but um, it does have a lot of romance, but check it out. There's two, there's two parts. I'll, I'll check it out for sure. Thank you. Okay. It reminded me of that when I, when I saw that. Okay, so this this is Laura. Hi, Laura. David, did you do theater in high school? Um, in high school, I didn't do a ton. I did two drama classes, um, which were very fun. Uh, and I'm hoping to actually go back and visit my teacher next time in Sudbury. Um, yeah, uh, but I didn't do I didn't do any actual theater productions, um, just because I was busy working and stuff. I was in I was in a different place. I was writing at the time mostly, mm-hmm. and so basically it was. Uh, it was get to school, go to class, write through class. Sorry to all my teachers. I wasn't paying attention. I was writing. Uh, and and lunch, hang out with my friends in all my classes, uh, write, come home, eat lunch, and write. That was all I did. That was my life, basically. For, for, for a good while. For a good while, at least. It was like your little obsession. I yeah. remember when I first started to write the characters kept speaking to me. So I would be cooking dinner for everybody, getting dinner mm-hmm. out and be like, okay, I'm going to my office. And I'd be in there. It was like exciting for me. And then that so wore exciting. off after a while when it became, when I had to have a book out and then I they had on demand for the next book. And then when that happened, that joy a little bit went away for me, yeah. but I get what you're saying. Like when, the, when, so, when a, something you love becomes work, it becomes yeah. work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. it's like, I mean, you might prefer it to some other work, but it's mm-hmm. still work. At the end of the day. But I totally know what you mean. I used to have dreams where I was like hanging out with with the characters. I was just cool. spending time. Yeah, it was it was. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah that was. Uh, so I totally get it. Christina says just a great career so far and talent for such a young guy. Bravo. Because that may have been. Was that when you were singing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Right. Maybe. I don't think my singing's that good. But <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. Um, Laura saying that is cool that you were cast first. They're mm-hmm. loving that. That's what I was told, at least. That's what I was told. We're going with it. Yeah. We're going with it. Tony says you have not only nailed Teen Elliot. Yeah, you make us all believers. This is true. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. This is interesting. Do you both wear, like, do you have to wear glasses? No, we 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 said that. But does Evan wear um, glasses or is it just his, this character? No, I don't believe he does. Um but maybe he has reading glasses. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's possible. I never watched him read, so. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lillian saying, I love the scene last night when Teen Cat reached for Elliot's hand after finding out her dad was dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. <laughs> now, when you share a, you know, share a scene with um, Alex, do you two... Like, talk to each other, like, how you're going to go about it, like, or is it just you're doing your thing over here, she's doing her thing over there, and you come together? Um, sometimes we'll talk about little specific things, usually maybe um, movement-based or, or something like that, but that's that's partially the director's job to help us with that as well. Okay. Um, I'm not drawing any specific examples, but... Mm-hmm. I've, for the most part, it's like she just she 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 knew what to do to deliver, and I would see that and, and that that's the the great thing about working alongside amazing actors is you can just draw from them in the moment. Um, so I know we did that a lot. Did you have a chance to? Did any of you know each other before beforehand or no? No. Nope. So none of your paths crossed. So did you have a chance to spend time together before you started working or no? No, uh, I met Sadie for the first time in the first scene that we filmed, which was in episode, the beginning of episode two, when we were walking towards the uh, the pond in the morning, mm-hmm. and uh, and she and I both jumped in. That was the first time I ever met Sadie. Sadie, actually, the very first time I ever spoke to Sadie 
was while we were blocking that scene. Oh, okay. Um, and then I met Alex for the first time in the green room in the uh, in the Landry house um, on the same day. So, so yeah, that was the first time we ever spoke. How many different directors were there when you for your scenes? Because did they do certain blocks? Yeah. Um, so there was uh, okay. Let's try to count one, two, three, four. I believe there were four. Okay. Yeah, and one of the directors ended up doing two blocks. Yeah, that's kind of like a, a pretty standard. I was just curious. Yeah, I think I think there were four. Okay. Apologies if I'm if I'm missing one. No, no, no. That's that's all right. That was just something mm -hmm. that popped into my head. Tony's agreeing about that whole scene, that whole emotional scene. And Kay said, frog farming is an interesting thing. We go frog gigging. Gigging, okay. yeah. I've heard of that. In North Carolina. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my dad loves, he loves critters of all, of all types. Uh, apparently when my mom met him, he had an apartment, a no pets allowed apartment, apartment filled with animals, birds, snakes, cats, dogs, turtles, every, <laughs> anything you can imagine. We've had quite the, uh, the assortment of pets throughout my life as well. Um, mm -hmm. So he, uh, yeah, he loves that. Right now, he actually, last summer, he had a mosquito farm. Oh, dear Lord. He had a mosquito farm <laughs> to feed, his, to feed his, uh, his salamanders. I'll be honest, I wasn't happy about that one. <laughs> He'd be living in the barn. He would not yeah. be living in the house. <laughs> no, actually, um, my, mom, my mom built him a shed to keep his critters in because he's like, I can't do this anymore. There's mosquitoes. In the house, <laughs> keep them in the shed. Oh my oh, goodness! Gosh. Yeah. Oh gosh. Linda says, "Where does the cast stay while they're filming? Were you able uh, to drive in, stay local?" So most of us um, live relatively locally. Yeah. Um, I was maybe an hour and a half drive from there, and they would oh. uh, send a very, very lovely driver to come uh, to come uh, bring me to set every morning. Um, Sadie and Alex, I believe, were a bit closer. They were right in Toronto. Um, yeah, so so if they were filming outside of the, because in the union there are there's like uh, borders, designated areas. So if you're outside of that designated area and you're filming there on a consistent basis, then they have to give you lodgings and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Or I'm pretty sure they have to. Um, yes. But in a, in the case of this show, we didn't have to. Because we lived close enough that it was it was an issue, yeah. And then they had that warehouse where they built like the interior stuff. Like we, yeah. we learned about that too. Yeah. Um, we had um, Samora was on last week, and and oh my god, she's just like so lovely, and she was telling us about all the different um, props and all the different things that went in like her little restaurant and the attention to detail. And I was like, the set decorators just like were amazing. Oh like, yeah. Amazing. Oh yeah. I know. It's such detail that we're paying attention to every little thing. I know we could talk, well, anybody that's here wouldn't be a spoiler. It wasn't this scene, right, Kathy? It was not, not this episode, last episode when um, they were playing a game of cards. So yeah. it was, right. It was in the right. present. Right? And mm -hmm. her, the cards were um, Alice in Wonderland, which we all know there's an Alice in Wonderland. Oh, movie. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I cannot believe that I never thought of that. Yes. I cannot believe that. But that's really cool. That's really neat. <laughs> and so the cards were there. We're like, that's cool. They're... So we were all excited, paying attention to all of this stuff. Brian, um, this is actually a comment that I was going to make, um, David. I said... I'm going to make a comment to Brian. Hi, Brian, by the way. So it says that seems like a long production schedule for 10 episodes. Maybe every show is different. I think that that is kind of the same as like he's he's a when calls the heart fan. So mm -hmm. they start in July and they're filming until like right around Chris's birthday, which is like around that first second week of November, usually the second week of November. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the same. If you they started filming at the very end of July, I remember because I was in touch with um with the showrunners. So they had just started filming in the very beginning of like August and you went to December. So that's kind of like, I think the same schedule. It's, it's pretty close. Yeah. And also yeah. this show had uh, like, they had individual days dedicated to the pond yeah, and jumping in the pond and everything. And that's yeah. a bit of a technical shoot. So that would add a bit of time on. Then there was um, 
there's some other stuff as well like the uh they had to to, to build the whole carnival oh that yikes. was yeah i need to think of that oh yeah. wow oh yeah they built the whole carnival what did you have a good time did you get to go around and enjoy it or no, no? Well, uh, uh, we did. I got to play a couple of games, like uh, like with the the the, the, the Red Rider air guns and stuff like that. I didn't get to go on the Ferris wheel. I wanted to though. I really wanted to because that thing moved frighteningly fast for a Ferris wheel. Mm. It it was it would start and it's like okay, is it supposed to be going that quickly? But apparently it was. It was like that's that's not a that's not a leisurely ride at all. That's that's. That's that's an intense uh, that's an intense ride, um, but yeah, they built that whole thing on the uh, the side of a cliff somewhere along the lake. I'm forgetting where it was now. I want to go back there because it was so beautiful. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Lee is saying, where do you typically read the fan theories? Uh, my mom is part of the uh, the the Facebook page, the Facebook page. Uh, yeah. Yep. And uh, I didn't disclose. That's a secret. We know. I know. Mm -hmm. Our admin team knows, but we didn't. They know? We, our <laughs> admin team knows that she is. I, oh. I realized it when she asked to join, but I did not let all of the people that are on there know because we don't want anybody to bother her. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I just I just doxed my mother. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. It's all that. good. Um, I'm sure she, she, she wouldn't mind. She wouldn't mind. But yeah, she so she's always sending me uh, stuff and showing me stuff that you guys are, are, are doing on there. Yeah, we do all yeah. kinds of stuff. Recipes I put out every Sunday that goes along. Mm -hmm. I did a White Witch uh, Mystery Milkshake this week. And we always have something fun, a close-up that people have to guess of what it is. And I told you that already. Just fun mm -hmm. stuff. That's yeah, cool. I've seen some of them as well. It was a popcorn, popcorn thing that was the most recent one that I saw. <laughs> We yeah. always have something good out there. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Let's see. Um... Elliot has such a cerebral personality. Did wearing the glasses help you get into character? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Having props is instrumental for being a character because I'm a I'm a very fiddly, touchy person, right? Yeah. Like if I, if I had glasses on my face, I would not be able to keep my hands off. Of them. Mm. Quite simply, I would not be able to do that. So, having specific mannerisms and whatnot, like. Uh, Evan and I both, we would do this, mm -hmm. this slow yes, glasses it's push, true, right? It's true. Yes, um, yes. And, and that was something that just kind of happened naturally for both of us um, with having glasses on our face. The watch as well. I had a, uh, a Casio calculator watch. Um, that was that like that was my my Elliot thing, one hundred percent, because that never that never left my wrist. Even jumping in the pond, that was on my wrist. Um, so. Uh, yeah yeah uh, having having um glasses and, and props and whatnot actually on everything i've worked on on uh, lucky's girl live i had glasses as well and i interacted with those glasses differently from uh have been interacting because he's a different character he's a very, yeah, different, yeah. very different character um that's cool I love i'm that. looking yeah. at your hair do do they color your hair for the role because i i've been looking at your photos you're kind of a ginger aren't you with the red hair um, so they, uh, they were dyeing my hair brown for the, uh, the whole production. I don't know if it's totally all left my hair yet. I don't know. Maybe it has, but yeah, I'm, I'm normally a, like kind of an Auburn ginger. That's sort of earlier. I said, I don't look like anyone in my family because nobody in my family, uh, nobody in my family is a ginger. Um, I think I'm like the first ginger in a very long time. Um, you know that, and, and I'm not, I'm going to word it. I don't want you to spoil anything. So yeah. people are obsessed with the dog. Yeah. So there was a dog on the, when we first started in the series that we had an opportunity to see. Mm -hmm. Is there a dog? Is there a dog? Yeah. There's what a dog. There is a dog. And everybody wants to know about the dog and they say the dog's name in, and, and the dog's name is Finn. Mm -hmm. And Will we see Finn in again? Like I haven't seen Finn in a while. Do we see him again? Okay. All right. I don't know. All right. That's just like they can't stop asking. I'm like, hmm, I'm just gonna ask that that right okay. there. No, no, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, um, this has been amazing. And of mm -hmm. course, everyone is going to just go look up all your other stuff, follow you on your social media. If you actually go to Instagram and you type in 
David Webster, your mm -hmm. actual little handle comes up and we're able to see you. Which yeah, is it's, it's David underscore 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 Webster. That's Webster. me. Yeah. And how about Twitter? Are you on Twitter? Uh, I have a Twitter. I think it's just really David Webster. It? No, I don't really use it. Yeah. I, I try, I'm trying to, uh, to, to limit my time on social media of all kind at this point. But I, I do have a Twitter. It exists. Right. If, so, if I start using it, then, uh, then, then I guess, I guess like you're welcome to go follow it if you'd like. We will. We'll follow. Mm -hmm. We'll look you up. And um, the reason why I was asking is for this show. Now, for other shows, I've done this. I will not live tweet. I won't tweet along with everybody and pay attention. I can't because I'll miss something. I, mm -hmm. I have to watch because there are so, Kathy, right, Kathy? So many little there's so many little nuances. Just the way someone looks at, yes. at another character, yeah. 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 So, Kathy, before we allow a, a David to go, because we've held him hostage for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we always say 20 minutes, and it turns into a year, I feel like. Um, is there anything else that you would like to ask this um, talented guy here? Just give everybody a heads up. When you go looking for David's you know, Wikipedia and IMDb and all that good stuff. There's two David Webster actors out there. Yes. One, of them, one of them is an American because I spent quite a bit of time looking and going, Teen Elliot is an improv comedian. We're going to have to ask him about that. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. A little more research. And it's like the, the U.S. David Webster is an improv comedian. And Maybe I, I should get a stage name or something because it's it's a yeah. very it seems to be a pretty common name. Yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah. It works. It works. They're all like, I don't know if you could see in the, if you're cl clicking on the comments, but Cindy and Tony and Christina and mommy of six and Kay and Chris and, and everyone, Greg, they're all like saying, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, oh, you. thank you guys. Thank you guys. Yes. And it's been a pleasure. Um, it is a pleasure to talk to you. You're a great conversationalist. Wonderful. It's like, and, and hopefully you'll come back and join us uh, when we get into season two. So we can, yes talk about oh my gosh the way season one ended and now we're in season two. Oh yeah oh yeah look can't wait i'd be happy to we love it all right thank you so much um nice. you go enjoy the rest of your night and we'll be following you on social media and looking out for your movie that's coming on mm -hmm. okay desire awesome. of the prey and desire that's of the P -R -E -Y, right pardon me p-r-e-y yes all right all right yeah Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. It's been Bye -bye. a pleasure. All right. Good night. All right. That was fabuloso. He is great. I'm going to do something that's unprofessional. I dropped my pen. I'm going to go down like that and pick it up. Sorry. Roxanne, Roxanne. Wow. Oh, I made myself dizzy. <laughs> Stella, I also paused. What's this? What's Stella saying? I also pause for 15 to 20 minutes to fast forward commercials. I can't read comments during the show. Oh, okay, Stella. Yes, I get you. And Stella's saying David is awesome. And everyone else is saying, we've got some new friends here. All right. So this is your time to go get a drink or use the bathroom. And then we're going to cross into now our recap. And um, before we do that, this is why you're getting your drink. It is lecture time from me <laughs> i'm the good one i know and i'll be the bad parrot and you'll be the good one so if you are new to the podcast and you don't know that we have a fan page we have a fan page it's on facebook it's the way home fan page and at this point what do we have let me look we have about 3.3 Three, I don't know, something like that. Three point, we are 3.4 and counting and rising. We have waiting. 38 people are waiting and five uh, appro pending approvals. I had to put on, um, a, and it's not on from everybody. Some people already know because they're not new to this, but there are a lot of new people that I have to put on post approval because especially when a new episode came on, people would just post things and we're spoiling it for others. And then people, instead of asking me personally or one of the admin, they'll send us a post that say the definition of what a spoiler is. I'm aware of what a definition is, but I don't think that some people, especially if you're new, are aware that like David was saying, Canada is a week behind us. And even here in the States, depending upon your streaming service or how it is that you get to see the, um, get your hallmark, 
I can see it on Sunday night. Kathy, you can see it on Sunday night, correct? Some yeah. people have to wait till Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. So just out of the courtesy for them, we put spoiler alert. So if you have something that's big and black and colorful like this, and then it says spoiler alert right here, and then it says everything you want to say, that's not a spoiler alert. Everybody could see it. And then it's, you can't unsee it. And we don't want to ruin it for people. So a spoiler alert is saying spoiler alert. And you put your little dots or and they, go, or they go down. Mm -hmm. And then you can't see it unless you click it. So then people could just move on by. Now, I had one person say to me, this was early on, I'm not here for those. I'm not here for others or I'm here for myself. And I thought, oh, oh, no, no, no. We can't talk to each other that way. So we're here, all of us together, and we're going to treat each other respectfully. So this is why we do the spoilers. We know you're excited. We know you want to post. We want you to post, put all your crazy theories out there. It's great. It's fun. I get that. But that's just the courtesy. I know what a real spoiler alert means. I know the definition. I know. <laughs> Um, the other thing too, is if you want to talk to Kathy or, if, or myself or Christine and Christina, because they're the moderators, if you have a question, don't put it in the, um, feed and as a, as a post message us. And that's our, our feed is like so filled with stuff. We don't want to take up that kind of stuff. Oh, oh, look at this Roxanne. You need to use your scary teacher face when lecturing. Good Lord, no. I had to use that today. I'm not using it now. It was a day. It was a day. So no, we're adults. And it's okay because this is supposed to be fun stuff anyway. Go ahead. What are we going to say? I was just going to say, just the, to remember, the one thing about us is we are a community. Yes. Uh, we're not just a bunch of fans. We're a community of fans who just happen to share a love of this show. And I do love it. And so we just need to, to share that and uh, be kind to each other and acknowledge that, you know, there aren't that many people around in my life, at least that I can go to and squeal and go, did you see who jumped into the pond last night? Yeah, everybody doesn't get that. They'll look at me like I've grown a second head. So all I right. really appreciate all of you. And uh, let's, let's just keep on having fun. And I wanted to add to, to what uh, Roxanne was saying about spoilers. And uh, most of you probably know this, but for the few who may not know it, a spoiler is simply talking about something that has happened on the show. If you've got a theory or a question, that's not a spoiler. You don't have to, we're not trying to put anybody to extra work. Mm -hmm. So if, it's, if it happened on the show, um, especially one of the most recent episodes. That's the current, you know, yeah. You no, know, again, remember that our friends in Canada are um, a week behind, so let's let's uh, let them enjoy it. Yeah. Me, personally, I like spoilers sometimes, so I'll click through, but give them the chance to make the decision of whether they want to know or not. Right, right, right. Um, and yes, Mommy of Six, I think most of the people, everyone on the page is super nice. Oh, and we're yeah. having a good time. And I know that David shared that his mom is on the page. She is not the only person that is connected to the cast, the showrunners, the publicist, Hallmark itself that's on that page. So if you think sometimes my rules are so strict, my rules are strict because I want our page to stay and to last and grow. I don't want us to get caught up in any legalities. I know people don't realize this, but if you are, and, and I wanted to clear this up right now, if you are going to take a picture that is has been shared from the press kit or anything from the show, it's not ours. It belongs to them. You have to put the, the, the credit to them. Technically, we're not allowed to use it at all, but they're going to give us a pass. And they're going to say, it's our fan page. We're excited. And as long as we are crediting Hallmark Crown Media, we're good to go. Okay. Um, that's with any kind of any, anywhere on Facebook, you should. Um, somebody posted something that was fantastic. And she posted it several times, had great music. And it would not, even if I posted it, I tried it as an experiment. It would not be accepted by Facebook. They, they pulled it off, which could give us a strike. And it's because it was music 
music belongs to the you get shut down for copyright infringement right away unless it is made as um made for facebook or made for instagram then it'll be okay that's why a lot of times things get shut down or shut off not us doing it it's no it's not us the other thing that i wanted to point out is and you see a lot of people on they on um youtube and they take clips from the show and they intertwine and they put music and they do all this stuff. All of that is copyright infringement. They don't have the right to do any of it. Um, none of that video, none of any of that belongs to us. And I won't allow it on the page because of it only out of respect for Hallmark respect for the showrunners, the writers, the, you know, the people that are putting this production on, it is their work. Imagine it's your work. You put something out on your personal Facebook page, someone takes it and does all this stuff to it and then puts it out there, you would be upset. So this is, this is why I'm very careful because we have to be. Okay. All right. So let's see, what's this? Um, I've had so much fun chatting with this group. I'm glad to hear it. Yes. I look forward to getting on Facebook in the group and clearing out my head of all my ideas. So thankful to have all of you to read them. I love reading everyone's theories. Um, which is all good. Thank you. All right. Ready, Kathy? Talk about theories. You start. I, I, happen. Uh, the show has got me going six ways from Sunday. I can't, I, I don't even have theories anymore. I just, I don't have a clue which way this is going. So I focused on the characters and, you know, what was happening with the plot. Um, I absolutely love the fact that they, they showed us that Kat and Elliot or Kelly were the end game back when they were teenagers. He knew it, she didn't know it. And, and I, I just love it. I love how they are so much more relaxed and comfortable. They, they've, they've really leaned into their new relationship. They don't, they don't seem self-conscious at all. And, and I just adore that. Um, as, as I mentioned earlier, what the heck is going on with Byron? There's some, I mean, they, they, they could have just <laughs> the character out, but no, they made a point of him being on there and saying he's going to Marrakesh. It's like, what is up with that? So I, I just, I can't wait till next Sunday to figure out all this stuff. I, I say it again, because I wrote it down. We need Elliot's notebook. Because yes. that's got all the secrets in it. Um, I'm wondering, and I don't know if they will talk about this, did adult Elliot know uh, that Kat and Alice were going to be involved in Colton's crash. And is that one of the reasons he was just so persistent in pleading with them to stop, don't go back? Um, so I, I'm looking forward to seeing if they talk about that. And they made a point, I thought, more than once of mentioning the fact that that pond gets frozen at that time of year. So, of course, I'm wondering, is some adult character going to get trapped in the past because they can't come back up, you know, because the pond is frozen and they can't emerge. And then um, the last thing that really struck me until you mentioned something, Roxanne, and I go, oh, wait, I, yeah, I got something on that too, is that um, Colton died the way he lived. He was a hunk in life, he was a hunk in death. So. He's a hunk in life and a hunk in death. Oh, I want so bad to have the actor on so you could say that you were a hunk in life and you were a hunk, a hunk in death. And he's going to say, oh, I'm sorry. I, I got to go. No, he's going to say, what address should we use to serve you with this cease and desist? But that's oh, okay. Where do you live, Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. So Kathy and I disagree on um, the theory about them coming back. There's so many cool things that people are saying. I'm just trying to highlight them, but I, I can't. Uh, we'll come back to it. Um, I first of all, I had thought that that when Kat and um, her father met up, that they would be at grief counseling. Um, I know other people thought of different things. I was like, I bet you any money he's going to grief counseling. And I thought it would be a really cool way for her to sit down in on it because she's grieving too. They both needed the grief counseling. And then they, she would kind of learn how her dad was feeling, which was kind of beautiful. Yeah. And she got to, that kind she of, made, yeah, it was good for her and it broke my heart a little bit. Now, 
I'm not surprised. I always thought that someone caused the crash. I always thought it was something he saw. There were two theories I had. One theory was he saw Jacob run across the, the road and that's what made him um, crash. Or my other theory was, is that he had gotten somehow because that boat was such a mystery to me. And I know that um, a lot of times they ask fishermen or people have boats to do illegal things. So maybe he got into trouble in some way. And that was it. But that as soon as the story unraveled, that theory flew out. I still think he saw something. And that is why he had the crash. I know now it looks like it's Kat and um, and uh, Alice. I don't think it was originally. I think because they were there, that all just happened. Regardless, just like Elliot says, that's always going to happen. You know what I mean? The past is the past. We can't change it. I don't think they're the reason for it. I really do think there's another reason. But that's just my, those are my thoughts. I have to tell you that one of my favorite things about this scene and something I could not like get rid of is the whole relationship between Elliot and Kat. I love it. Like I love it as kids and as adults, like when she, she put her hand out and she reached for him and he grabbed her hand. I was like, oh, and there was Brady. What, it you was know, the most like, natural thing in the world. Yes. And they're so good at it. And then when she came back and she's taken off his glasses and she's like, I reached for your hand. It's always been you. And let me tell you, their smooches in, 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 in Hallmark are legendary. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're groundbreaking trailblazing because those are some smooches. We had a wonderful smooch and somebody, I always say this, but someone's like, we you have to talk about other show before. I'm going to mention when calls the heart because when calls the heart had one crazy smooch that we were waiting for on the bridge. And I know the two actors said they talked to each other. They said, how are we going to do this? And they said, we're going to kiss. We're going to really go at it and kiss because they've been waiting for this like desperate passion well, we got desperate passion more than once before mm -hmm. with them. Oh, I love it. Go ahead. What are you going to say? Nothing. Go ahead. No, no. And I was like, no wonder they have an intimacy coordinator on the show. And I would like for the intimacy coordinator to, there's actually two. I want them to come on to talk to us about that because I think it's kind of new for Hallmark. What do you think? I yeah. haven't heard of an intimacy coordinator before on any Hallmark production. I know. And Laura thinks I'm hilarious. I don't know why, but okay. Chris and Aaron served as their own intimacy coordinator because they talked about it and, and really plotted it out between the two of them. So mm. I, I, I love Kelly. I just love him. Now we got a whole bunch of teachers are on here. Thank you. And they're all saying to their students that they should be watching the show. You know why they should watch this show? Because first of all, it is family approved and age appropriate, but they should watch this show because the writing is fantastic and they should pay attention to detail and how it all comes out, you know? Oh my goodness. Um, before we finish up, I wanted to show Kathy real fast. Um, uh oh, let me fix that. You know, our close up that I had broadcasted, I'm going to add it to the stream right there. There it is. This is the close up. Don't write what it is yet. You can write what it is when it is um, 10 after the hour. So, oh no, I'm sorry. No, I'm looking at the wrong thing. No, no, no. I got the wrong time. Yes, 10 after the hour. So for me, it's 9.04. So when it's 9.10 or if it's 8.10 or 7.10 or 6.10 or 11.10, wherever you are, 10 after the hour, you are going to put the answer of what this is right here. And then I have a second photo that I'm going to share with y'all, but not yet. And I will do that in a minute or two. So anyway, take a look at that. I'm going to leave it up for a minute. Miss Kathy, what else did you want to say about... Um, about these theories. Um, I got, I'm going to highlight some things. Anything about, what do you think of, someone mentioned on here, and if I didn't see your name, I'm sorry. Byron is leaving just as the pond is freezing. Do you think Byron has any connection to that pond? I don't know anything at this point. I will be at the edge of my seat literally next week, hanging on every single scene and every single word 
And I can't wait till the end of it because I'm certain there's going to be a big round in my head of, oh, that's why such and such happened or that's what this, that, and the other meant. So I'm, I'm just, I'm along for the ride. And I'm actually loving the ride. Me too. I, I do. So I do have, I mean, we're, I, I'm going to put a big prediction. I would love it if everyone added on here. Um, wait a minute before I get there, Mickey's and Minnie, um, the grief counseling was the first time we can tell Colton is a time traveler. He spoke right to Kat to tell her how he felt about her. You think I didn't so? that he was a time traveler from that? I think he was having. Um, I thought he was having, you know, that cusp of death awareness or realization. Plus, she started. She had been calling him daddy for the last few minutes, so it may have triggered in him that, oh my gosh, this is Catherine older. I don't know. I don't know. Could be okay. All right, um, Catherine. Dell and Colton dancing really moved me. And that was something I hadn't talked about yet. And what was that all about with adult Dell? I mean, two I think it was a memory, you know, when you have, a, I think that they, the writers like to play into this too, but I like when the, um, when, you know, people have a memory and a flashback and you almost can imagine they're there and she's listening to the music mm -hmm. and she's into it and she's probably dancing, imagining she is dancing in his arms. But then it was like, it was so real. And then we're like, was he there? You know, I think we're thinking anything goes now, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I know what you're saying, Mickey. He knows who she is before the crash. I didn't think so. Um, I know what you're saying. I know what you're talking about. Um, okay. But I didn't, she was talking about when they're in grief counseling, not when, when she's like daddy and, and she's holding him. She was meant when they were in the counseling. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. But I still, I don't still, I still don't think so. But listen, that we're not pros. We're not pros. We're not you. privy to anything. Um, Deb Johnson's noping. I don't know what she's noping about. Be a little more <laughs> like, nope. I don't know what she's disagreeing with, but I wanted to. Um, and Christine is Christine is saying, yeah, there's people that think something's up with Byron. You know, I mean, I was saying to Kathy, did they write him in as a character that would facilitate the whole Dell and her still in love with her husband feelings because she had an opportunity with a very handsome man who was pursuing her to get to, together with him. She admitted she had feelings yet every time he would reach for her hand or want to be with her in some way, she's like, no. And he even said to her, you're, you know, and we're, we, we really aren't working out. She's like, no, okay. Yeah. Bye. And he bye. has to do it. Don't let the door hit She's like, Oh, you're, you're, your husband, I mean, your wife died, but you don't have any ring one. He looks at her and he's like, no, cause she's dead. And I didn't want to keep honoring, you know, our time is over where she still was, you know, very much in love with her husband. So I'm wondering if that's why his character's there and we're re reading more into it. But here's the thing that I like about his character leaving. If he's not returning, they need a newspaper. They need someone to run the newspaper. There's someone who wants to run the newspaper, and that would be Kat. So now she can own the newspaper. If he's really leaving. Yes, and she could take it over. But and Marrakesh. Can't get over I mean, Marrakesh. I'm going to Philadelphia. I, I'm going to Chicago. Why Marrakesh? <laughs> oh, you know what? She made a connection here. Um, salty dog re reactions. The dance. Oh, I'm saying she. You could be a guy. Um, the dance was like the end of Titanic. You are correct. And she feels young, and and she's doing the dance. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Um, let's see. I think. Um, hold on. I think the mem. I think that memory was just made because of Cat telling him to tell his family about the the grief counseling. Okay, and. Um, and that's, I think mommy of six means when we were like having that conversation about knowing each other and it really isn't that he knew who she was. It was more like share with your family and let them know. I think that's what she's saying. I think, we um, I think she was dreaming Carrie with her eyes open and up. I don't know. I thought she was dancing. All right. 
I think Colton and Dell's dance was a memory of the night he crashed and died. He was going to come home and tell her about the PI and the therapy. Yes. Yes. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, that's 810. Okay. All right. Who's our first, first 10 person. Let's see. Are you not seeing it? I just, I thought I posted it. Oh, did you? You did. I didn't see it. I'm sorry. Catherine. Catherine, Catherine, you won tonight. Catherine BB, right? Mm-hmm. All right. You are the winner. Well, I have, we have some news, some excellent, exceptional news. Can I ask, ask you one last question before you finish your talk? I'm not going to tell it. I'm going to put up another no, picture. Well, yeah. Oh, you, are you putting up another picture? But go ahead. Go talk. Okay. Yeah. No, go put your other picture up. Is this another another game? So I put a bonus because this was so important to me. Okay, then I do want to ask my question. Go ahead. You were mentioning earlier about um, Aaron and Chris did their scene and they, the, talked about and it. they planned it out. Yeah. Wouldn't it be cool to be able to ask someone like Kat or Elliot, if they blocked their scene, if they talked about it. Sure, like so ask cool. Kyler, if we that could ask so Kyler. Cool. Yeah. Well, guess what? We're gonna ask her next week because she's our guest. <laughs> <laughs> she is our guest next week. <laughs> Just as we were starting the podcast, her peeps emailed me. So she is our guest. So get your questions ready. ready so perfectly timed for uh, oh, yeah. the day after the season finale. Yep. So by the way, 9.15 by me. So quarter after, it's like 9.12. It could be 8.12, 7.12, 5.12, 3.12, you are. When it's 9.15, tell me what that is, what I'm looking at. I know what I thought it was. I know. Yeah. We're not going to talk about what Kathy thought it was. Don't give anything away. Oh, Deb Johnson's like, oh, because she can't be there. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Yes, Stella. I know. <laughs> I might pass out. I have to contain myself because <laughs> I love her. That's all right. Much like Alexander Haig. What? Do you remember that? No, why don't I remember that? What do you mean? Was he the president for uh, the, uh, the uh, it was a big deal for some president who got sick? Oh, 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 okay. And he wasted no time in going, don't worry, I'm in charge. And yeah. he actually really wasn't. He wasn't yeah. in the line of succession. All right. No, I know. 9.13 it is by us. So at 9.15, you got to put your answer. Now, I'm going to take it away. I hope you all had enough time to look. Do you think they had enough time to look at that? We had plenty of time. All right. Bye. I'm leaving it. I'm removing it. Okay. So the reason why I chose the picture in the... um of the lamp is because, hey, we got to see inside Elliot's house. Finally. Yes. And I was trying to like, Reagan, I was trying to like look around and, and pay attention. And there were a lot of um, boat, a lot of stuff about fishing and a lot of um, war type things I saw. And I mean, I, I was like, is he a, he's a science teacher, not history. So I saw a lot of historical stuff. So I don't know. You know what I thought was interesting? What? Um, Kat was kind of acting like she's reliving a little bit of her teenage years, you know, packing her bag. Yeah, I, I'm going to go stay. What did she tell with a friend or I'm going to go to spa. Have, I'm going to have some, yeah, some spa time. And uh, that just struck me as, why don't you just tell you, like, her, Del would probably be thrilled if she knew they were going together. And then Alice comes in and it's like she had told everybody she was going to the spa, but somehow Alice knew exactly where she was. So is Alice, does Alice just assume they're together? Well, Alice saw her mom walking in the field at night oh, and so figured okay. it out. Yeah. yeah. She's like, oh yeah, look at this. And she opened up the door and and I was like, mm. well, yeah. And then the next week's previews where Brady is like, is he having second thoughts now? Like, do, do we really want to sign? He's just like, yeah. Yeah. And they're so comfortable with each other. That's what I like. 
they're not acting like this is new. It's like, yeah, we've been going together for the last 30 years. We just didn't know it. Yeah. Fish on the guitar, fish in the clay bowl. Yes, there's fish everywhere. Fish is very important to the story. I agree. I agree, Laura. And a couple other people are saying that. It looks like um, Christina was the first person to type this in. And Christina typed it in at 9.15. No one else did. I think everybody was so excited about Kyler coming on. Please don't do that. Why? It's so frightening. It's like 3D. Roxanne puckered. Ooh. They were kissing. Look. Add to the stream. See? His little mustache, the nose, the lips. I want, I'm going to save this because I want the intimacy coordinator to explain. I'm only kidding. <laughs> it really is them kissing. All right, Christina. You're in, Christina. You're down. I need yes. you. I love you. I want you. See, I can be a writer for the show. All right. No, no. <laughs> Different show for you. <laughs> All right, friends. All right. Elliot looked concerned about Kat using him as a ruse for time traveling and not seeing clearly. Mm, yeah, he did. He did. He did. He did. But I don't think he was as concerned about being used as he was about what she was going to encounter when she got there. And he knew that would traumatize and hurt her. Deb, she can't see it. Deb, this is his nose. This is his eye. That's his cheekbone. That's his nose. This is his mustache right here. And this is his other part of his lip. You know, we can't see your finger. Um, your it's, cursor. Oh, you can't see my cursor? No. Oh. What? That means my students never could either. And they never told me. They just didn't want to break your... <laughs> break they your didn't heart. care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I was sharing the screen, they could. And I'm not sharing the screen that way. I'm sorry that you can't see it. But if you see that white in the center, that's their lip where their lips didn't touch yet. Lord, they, doesn't that metal shine thing earring, look like a ring? There's no silver earring. Oh, I can't even talk about that. Bye. I'm removing that. We're done. <laughs> We're not kidding. What is the silver thing? There is no silver thing, Deb Johnson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a space. That's all right. She just validated me. No. It is the space in between of their lips coming together. Okay, we're, we're done. We're done. <laughs> all right. Good night, everyone. Thank you yeah, so much. Don't for forget to come back next week to see Kyler as Kyler. our special guest. It's going to be so great. They all thought it was an earring. <laughs> it is not a fail. It is not a fail, Deb Johnson. Uh, just because you didn't get it, other people did, and your eyes didn't see it. That's okay. Salty dog thinks it looked like a nose ring. Oh, uh, goodbye. Goodbye. We're not. We're not. <laughs> we're not talking about it. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad you had fun, Tony. And I'm um, Laura. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yep, silver earring. Bye. We'll see you next week. Good night. <laughs> oh, good Lord.